Well, good morning. So you've made the decision you want to get a heat pump. But before you do, before you head into the whole installation process, getting a survey done, there are some things you should consider. This is part three of our series. Parts one and two are linked in the description below. Today, we're going to talk about EPCs and insulation. Now, if you're getting a heat pump installed in the UK, we have something called the Boiler Upgrade Scheme. This is a government grant of up to seven and a half thousand pounds to replace an existing gas boiler with a heat pump. But there are a few things you need to do before you apply to make sure that you're going to get that grant. And the most important one is to have a valid EPC. Now, we'll come on to what an EPC is in a moment. But the first thing you should consider before investing in any kind of technology like this is, is your house sufficiently insulated? Now, the EPC will cover that. But the first thing you should consider is get up in your attic and have a look at what your insulation situation is. I guarantee you, whatever is up there, you can always add to it. And it will be the cheapest thing you can do to save energy. Head down to B&Q, buy a few rolls of insulation. There are multiple different types. To be honest, any of them is better than nothing. So get some insulation, roll it out, cover over the existing insulation. You don't have to take the old insulation out, fit the new insulation across the top, and it will give you an immediate improvement. Now, let's talk about EPCs. EPCs are energy performance certificates. These are things that are required by the government if you're buying and selling houses. They're very similar to the certificates that you see on the side of electrical appliances, where they show the sort of A to G rating of how much energy that appliance is going to use. Well, an EPC is the same thing, but for your house. So first of all, how do you find out if you've got an EPC? Well, there's a really simple to use government website. You can head over to the link that I'm putting on the screen. I'll also place it in the description below. When you get there, press the Start Now button and enter your postcode. Now, I'm going to put my postcode in, but I'm obviously I'm going to fog it out, and I'm also going to fog out all my neighbors' addresses just for privacy reasons. But as I scroll down here, I can find my house. Now, you can see my house has a valid EPC because I needed it to get my heat pump installed. But if I click into it, what you can see here is we have an A rating, which is the best rating you can get, because our surveyor went through our house with a fine tooth comb and looked at all of the different things that we could do that we've already done and make some recommendations of how we can make our house more energy efficient. Now, as I say, this is a requirement if you're buying and selling a house. So if you bought your house a long time ago, like we did nearly 30 years ago, it wouldn't have had an EPC. So for older houses, you will need to get a surveyor to come in and do this. If you just Google for EPC auditors or EPC surveyors in your region, you will find one pretty easily. You shouldn't pay more than about 70 to 90 pounds, depending on where you live, for a, an inspection and certificate to be issued. Now, here's the important thing, and this is why we talked about installation a moment ago. In your EPC certificate, if you're applying for the bus grant, it must not say requires improved insulation or anything about adding insulation to your house. So make sure you talk to the person that's doing the, the inspection to make sure that they don't write something like that into your EPC certificate. Once you've got all your insulation sorted, the best thing you can possibly do is invest in something like this. This is a thermal camera. Now, there are multiple models out there on the market. This particular one is by a company called Hick, Hick Micro. It's called the B10. It is an appliance in that it has the screen and everything all built in, which means you don't need anything extra. You literally just take this with you and you can see the heat loss from your house. Now, there are other models. There are a company, a company called Top Don. There are others where you can attach it to the bottom of your phone. So if you don't want a, an appliance like this, you want something that plugs into your phone, then there are models that do that. The only real difference between the two is this doesn't record what you're seeing, so you just see it on the screen, whereas the ones that plug into your phone do allow you to take a recording if you need that. Now, I've never needed to take a recording, so this one for me is perfect. It's, it's idiot proof. Now, you shouldn't pay more than about 200 to 250 pounds for one of these. Beyond that, you're probably getting into professional devices. And to be honest, I'm not sure that the value is there if all you're doing is checking for heat loss in your house. 
Now, the best time to do a heat loss check is when it's really cold outside. So we're not going to do it right now when the sun is shining. We're going to wait till tonight when it's nice and dark and the temperature is around zero and we're going to go around the house. You don't have to wait that long, so. Okay, as you can see, it's now nighttime. We're going to take our thermal camera and we're going to go for a walk around the house. We're going to check all the windows, the doors to make sure that we're not losing any heat. Now, as a first test, we're just going to take a temperature reading at the front of the heat pump. Um, it's just below freezing the air that's coming out there. And again, if we lift our camera, you can see there the pipes that are going up to the hot water tank are glowing because they are full of hot water. OK, let's head around to the front of the house. So as you can see there, you can see my heat reflection in the window. But if we look at the window frame as a whole, what you'll notice is along the top of the windows there, there is a little bit of heat escaping that's a little bit warmer than the surrounding parts of the window. That's where the air vent is that just allows a little bit of air to get in and out of the house. But we might need to see about blocking that up. Now, if we take a look at the front door, Again, you can see the heat coming out through the glass. Now, we could put a solid door in there and block that up, but we're not actually losing a huge amount of heat. One place that is always worth checking is right down here at the bottom of the door, because that's where your draft excluder would be. So it doesn't look too bad. We might want to just look at the draft excluder, maybe put a new one on, because there is a bit of heat getting out there. As we come around to the side of the house, you can see here, this is the downstairs toilet window. We do have a little bit of heat leaking out along the top edge of the window. Might be worth checking the silicon sealant in the light tomorrow, just to make sure that uh, we're not losing any unnecessary heat out of there. So now I'm upstairs in the house. What we'll do is we'll take our thermal camera and we'll take a look at the ceiling. And you can see we have a couple of cold spots right next to the loft hatch. So we may look at insulating a little bit better around there, just to make sure that we're not losing any heat up into the loft. Now, if we take a look in our ensuite bathroom, you can see right in the corner there, we do have a cold spot. This is obviously the external corner of the house. So again, I'm not sure how we could improve the insulation there short of remodeling the bathroom, taking the plasterboard off and putting some insulation behind it. One thing I do find interesting is you'll notice this spotty pattern. This is the dot and dab that is behind the plasterboard. So obviously the plasterboard is held off the wall in certain places, but where there is a some adhesive, it is letting a little bit of cold through. Now again, worth checking the ceilings and you'll notice again that cold spot there that I can do something about. I'll actually head up into the attic in the next couple of days and just put a bit more insulation in that corner. So you get the idea. Taking a thermal camera, going around and checking all of the seals on all of your windows and doors, checking your ceilings to make sure that you're not losing heat up into your attic. All of that, if you get that all done before you have your heat pump installed, it'll make your house really nice and toasty warm once it's up and running. With that, it is too cold to be standing out here, so time to head back to early this morning when the sun was out. So that's it for today's video. I hope this has been useful. As I say, this is part three of a five-part series. Parts one and two are in the description below, and if part four is available right now, you'll see it over on the left-hand side. I hope you found this useful, and if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.